Hello, Alter Noops Nation. I'm Reed Nelson. Uh, before we get to the Ronnie Kennedy interview, I've got a quick 30-second advertisement for you. The Minnesota Draft League begins on Sunday, June 2nd. The draft will take place on Friday, May 31st at the Buffalo Wild Wings in Roseville. Uh, we've got about 15 spots left. Those spots I expect to be gone by the end of the weekend. So you want to definitely get registered for that. Also, we're going to be finding out who the best shooter in Minnesota is from June 2nd to the June 6th. June 7th, it is going to be me uh, at five metro area Lifetime Fitnesses. Those dates are below me. Actually, they're scrolling right underneath the screen right now. So here's the Ronnie Kennedy interview that you've all been waiting for. All right, Ultimate Noops Nation, I'm here with Ronnie Kennedy. Um, how are you doing tonight, sir? Good, great, great. Okay, so first, a lot of people want to know, um, what were you doing in Vegas refing, a, refing for the national tournament? Oh, I just wanted to go out there and see what kind of talent they had out there at nationals. You know, I've been hearing that it was good for the last two years, so... I asked the staff, could I come out and do a couple of games or whatever, and they said yes. So, and did you enjoy yourself? Oh man, that was a that was a real good tournament. I enjoyed myself very much out there. Okay, um, take us through the final play. Obviously, we'll just cut right to the chase. What did you see from your vantage point? At my vantage point, um, Paris, player for the Bulls, was advancing to the basket. On the baseline, I'm looking at the defender, his motion, and what he's going to do. He's um, anticipating Paris coming. He get Paris starts to make his move. The defender slides. He's there, one foot up. As Paris is contacting him, he's leaning, and that what gave me the call on the blocking. Now, if he had got there to the spot and got down and set, and Paris came into him, it's an obvious charge. But in my position, where I was standing, it was obviously a block from my position. That's what I view. Okay, now um, you three refs huddled for about a minute and a half. What was said in that huddle? Well, we talked about the call, and I asked uh, you know, the officials what each one had, and basically I told them what I had, and then we all kind of agreed to that's what we're going with. If you could do anything differently with that whole situation, what would it be? Uh, that's, a, that's a tough decision. You know, you know the call was made. Basically, what we do is just stay with the call we made. But, you know, it's a lot of things that could have been done. You know, we could have went to the arrow, or we could have called jump ball. But at the time, we all made the decision that's what was going to be done. Have you seen the uh, the replay? Yes, I've seen parts of it, pieces of it, both angles. And still, I'm staying with my call. I was just going to say, <laughs> what would be your call now? I'm still staying with my call. Thank you, Ronnie. I really appreciate your time. All right. Thanks, Open Hoops. That was the Ronnie Kennedy interview. Now I'm with Izzy Alcafas for this week in rec. Uh, we're going to keep this national tournament edition because I think it's all still fresh in our minds. Um, you saw it. You were there. What are your thoughts? Um, at the time when it happened in real time, I think I did say it was a charge. But um, they both called, well, one called a block, one called a charge. In that scenario, if it isn't 100% charge, I think you go with a block. Especially when you take into fact that Ronnie called a blocking foul on Paris with about 10 seconds left that gave the decision to lead, which shouldn't have been called. So people are up in arms about that call. I think the block call on the other end was just as bad. Uh, and I, I don't really blame Ronnie for calling a block there. I think it was a bang-bang play, and his reaction was to call a block, and I don't really think it's that egregious. People are freaking out, saying it was an obvious charge, and I don't really think it was. I think it was a judgment call, and he judged with the block, and I, I, don't, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think my favorite part is when people think it's a conspiracy theory coming out of Minnesota that Ronnie Kennedy was flown down there to uh, throw the game, but yet I'm filming it. Underneath the basket, I've, I just I'm, I'm going to film this conspira conspiracy theory for the entire UH world to see. Not only that, but he's the one that called the block on on Paris. Ten seconds left in the game to give him. I mean, no, it, it's not conspiracy. You can say that Ronnie's bad, okay? Which I think he's a good ref. You can say that he's bad, but I don't think that it was home cooking at all. If it was, then he wouldn't have called the blocking foul on Paris with ten seconds left. And, I mean, a huge shout-out goes to the three Vegas teams who improved immensely. Uh, the Reapers easily had the decision. They had the ball with 25 seconds left. One of their players decided it would be a good idea to oh. drive into the lane, spin around, and throw a ball off the backboard. No, number 11. Number 11. Was, I remember and, then, and then the decision went down and dribbled the ball until there was about five seconds left, and I think it was Anthony Bird calmly hit it off the backboard. So that was the Reapers game. you know. So next season, a Las Vegas team could just as easily be in the championship, and then what are we going to do when there's two Las Vegas? Vegas reps. So, uh, you know, I, I guess it is what it is. Um, any other thoughts on the national tournament? 
it was awesome. I'm so glad I went out. Uh, I think the <laughs> extracurricular activities were just as fun as the on-court. Actually, they were more fun than the on-court. Uh, but the competition there, advice to all the teams that went, uh, stop bringing talent and start bringing teams. Uh, it's essentially what it comes down to because a lot of those teams are ridiculously stacked with talent, but none of them play like a team. So I think that's the one word of advice. Um, I would agree as well. Um, so we're so we're wrapping up uh, the national tournament. We're wrapping up hashtag blocker charge. Um, you know, I, I I don't know if there's anything else to say. Briggs is going to be on here afterwards with the, with the, with a segment we filmed earlier in the week. Um, how about this week in Rack Ultimate Hoops Minnesota style? Um, trying to think. The Rebels are back on track. Um, Squires same ball that came down, that went into overtime. Squires were up six, I believe. Gave up a three. Pinkett had a steal with a minute left, maybe under a minute, and uh, swung it around. Sunny hit a three to tie it, tie it up. The Squires just squandered a six-point lead with a, about a minute left. I mean, who? I mean, the Huskies are streaking right now. Who else do you see as a team that's to kind of open your eyes a little bit that maybe you wouldn't have expected? Uh, wouldn't have expected. Well, obviously seven. Uh, I think they're rolling. Uh, the schedule obviously is favorable, but they're. They play the Fridley style, uh, up tempo, run and gun, just high flying. That's always been Fridley's mo for however however long I've been in the league. Uh, Bloomington South seems to be the league that was more team ball, more traditional style. Fridley's always been the run and gun, and I think that they're going to open a, a, a lot of eyes, especially if they keep coming back and improving their roster and kind of getting used to the game. Because I think they're going to get into the playoffs and they're going to struggle in the playoffs because they're going to face a Bloomington team that really grinds games out. Uh, but I'm I'm really excited about that team. Uh, teams like now Briggs and I are going to discuss this real quick, but I'll, I'll get your thoughts. Teams like Callahan Auto Parts, who are probably going to finish at six and one. Teams like the or six and two. Teams like the Killer Bees that are going to finish. They're five and one now. They could finish at seven and one, but they have, they're playing the bottom tier Fridley teams. A seven and one, or no, let's put it this way: a six and two, almost certain Callahan Auto Parts versus a uh, four and four Rebel squad. What do you do? Well, whoever made the schedules. For Callahan, Ugh. well, let me ask you this: with 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 only three or four top tier teams in Fridley, you can't give everyone a top tier schedule. And I wanted to make sure that the Turtles, five five, those squads, well, week in and week out, were being challenged. Right. And, and we were expecting Callahan to be bad based on their thirty point loss to the, the Killer Bees. I get it. Uh, if they finish six and two, the Rebels finish four and four. I will one hundred percent give the edge to the Rebels. Uh, it's not a, not a doubt in my mind. The Rebels are a better team. They have a better resume. Those sure. four wins are going to be a lot better than any six wins that the Callahan has. Big wins. That's what we yeah. said at the beginning of the year. Big wins. And, and the losses, the Rebels' losses are going to be better than the Callahan's two losses if they finish 6-2. and two. Uh, For me, it's not about the record. It's about the resume. It's about the overall quality of the team. I take history into account when I do my picks. Uh, I, I don't give Durant Jemima the edge over, uh, for instance, a team that's blue chips, for instance. They've been around. We know what they've done. They've won playoff games. Durant Jemima's first season where they finish above 500 because of an easy schedule. Uh, they don't get the benefit of the doubt. just doesn't work that way with me. I think you got to earn it over time. Keep in mind, the uh, Killer Bees may finish 7-1, and one, and they did beat the Fob 5. Right. So they do have a marquee win on their team, but they did lose to 7 by 41. So yeah, yeah, It goes both ways. I mean, Killer Bees will have the benefit of the doubt over a team like Callahan because they have a better win, uh, but they still, I still can't give the Killer Bees a higher seed than the Rebels. You just can't do it. Right? I mean... It's going to be fun. Uh, we will, uh, we're will. we going to get Jason Briggs on here. Thank you, Mr. Elkfoss, for uh, contributing and for coming down to Vegas and for helping out. We'll see you next week. All right, Ultimate Hoops Nation, I'm here with Jason Briggs. Uh, we're going to be playing Pretender or Contender for a couple of Fridley teams and one Bloomington South team. Number one, Callan Auto Parts, sit, sitting right now at 4-2 and two with a 17-point loss to the Huskies, a 26-point loss to the Killer Bees, and only a two-point win over the Kool-Aid Kids. Could easily finish at 6-2. and two. My question for you, just to clarify, contender or pretender, is are we doing Gold Cup? Are we doing playoff run? Are we doing uh, one win? <laughs> well, we're not, we're not, we're not going Gold Cup. Let's say uh, contender or pretender for the Elite Eight. Pretender, big time. Uh, where they are going to have success is teams that do not have elite guard play, yet also don't have two big guys. 
Um, having Drew Martin and Kevin Chase on the court at the same time requires you to have two solid bigs. One to keep Chase off the boards and one to keep Drew from going nuts. That being said, there are too many teams nowadays. There used to be a shortage of big men. Now there seems like there's a lot of teams other than a few, few in Fridley here that have enough post play and, and larger defenders to, to keep them from doing anything. So despite the four and two record, I would say pretender. Okay. Uh, Killer Bees, they're five and one right now. They've got a three point win over the Kool-Aid Kids who have not won a game yet, a six point win over the Pigeons, a five point win over Fob Five, and a 41 point loss to seven. Now, the Killer Bees, they've got some really likable guys on that squad. And they've got some guys who are on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, too. A couple guys I really want to cheer for, and a couple guys that just just stop talking. So where do the Killer Bees land? I like their big guy, who's not actually a big guy. I believe his name is Ryan... Pachia. I'll call him Pachulia for Zaza, uh, my favorite Atlanta Hawk of all time. Sorry, Dominique. Um, that being said, their, their game against Fob 5 was pretty fluky. Um, I'm not going to discuss who was there, who wasn't there. <laughs> we, just, we know. It was a little fluky. Um, their week one dominating victory over Callahan Auto Parts. Callahan didn't have any guards, so that was also a little different. Um, the loss to seven, though, I, I don't think was indicative of their team either. So they're somewhere between that team that crushed Callahan and got crushed by um, seven. But if we're going to lead eight, I'd have to go pretender. The, the record's good, but the schedule is not of enough quality for, for to convince me otherwise. Sure. Okay, Broncos four and two. They've got a, only a seven point loss to Showtime, which is a good loss. An eight point win over Hammer Time, which is not a good win. A forty nine point win over the Donkeys, and a twelve point win over Bad Boys Three. Broncos contender or pretender for lead eight? You know, I like this team. I, I don't like the shot selection. I. <laughs> I've been telling Todd, um, who I've seen him pick up all a few times, that they just need some guards. And they they took my advice, probably not because of me telling him that, but just they could see it too. And they added two pretty solid players in, in Dave Bowman and Brett Murdoch. The issue I have is their shot selection is a pretty piss poor. And if they're taking, and I think last night they took 32 of their shots, and, and Brett had a good game, so I'm not going to say he didn't have a good game, but that's way too many when you got a beast in Fredrickson, and Brayton is a tough cover. Uh, Morris can hit the outside shot. Keon Austin's really good at mid-range. Uh, but I do think they have the talent to be a contender on the Elite Eight because I think they're going to be a tough matchup as long as they get the old shot situation taken care of. Ro Robert needs to have the ball a little bit more than he does, um, but I, I would say... Of the three teams we mentioned, they have the best shot. Okay, last one. Uh, seven, five and one. An 18-point loss to the Turtles. 41-point uh, win over the Killer Bees. A one-point win over the Huskies. And a 31-point win over the Club, which seems like a typo to me, but I think that's right. Uh, seven is five and one right now. Where do you, where do you have them? Well, um, was the game against them close tonight? No, I believe it was 12. Okay. Uh, that, that's actually more of a guess than anything else. Okay. Yeah, about, about 12. Okay. Um, I'd, I'd put them in the contender category. Um, they are a little young, and they definitely showed it against the Turtles. It's it's tough. When you play grown-ass grown men like the Turtles, you got to keep your heads. And so they kind of showed some petulant schoolboy, daddy took away the Range Rover, like, pouting attitude last week. And, I mean, evidenced by a, a technical they got at the end of the game where they, they just figured, hey, it's not our day, it's the rest problem. Sure. But I can't ignore the talent they have in their team. They do have a lot of chemistry. Um, Elijah's a great player. Brahma is a, is a solid player as well. They can hit some threes. So I, if they get the right draw, uh, Elite Eight is a definite possibility for that team. So I'd go contender. Bonus, contender, pretender, three and three Timber Puppies. Okay, so they, uh, they had a tough, a tough go of it last night with uh, a doubleheader. Um, honestly, if... If they weren't playing Jemima, they, they probably would have lost both. Uh, my issue with the Timber Puppies right now is they do not have, they're aging, all right? So they don't have the offense. Disperse. Uh, right. They don't have the offensive firepower that they once had to, ha to make up for the defensive lapses that they show on the other end. The Rebels had 40 points in the first half. 
with with Byrne and and Jude is a good defender. Ball, there's no it's Santowski. There's no reason any team should score. Rebels should score 40 points on a team that doesn't turn the ball over. So I, I worry about the uh, the defense a little bit too much to to put them in the contender pile. I'd have to say pretender. I mean, obviously Mike Byrne gets hot. Think things can happen. They get the right draw. But I I don't see them in the Elite Eight. I see them getting out early. I, I would say they're a Sweet 16 upset alert. Who's your uh, who's your championship game right now? Uh, gorillas, turtles. I I think Izzy finally gets over the hump, gets out of that final four, and then loses in the title game. How sweet it is to see him lose to the turtles. Yeah. Monska hits a three right in his face as the game ends. I would prefer them to lose by forty and Monska to go for thirty-nine. So. All right, thank you, Mr. Briggs. Thanks, Briggs. Appreciate it.